It's time for the Freedom in 5 Minutes podcast. Powerful and liberating business strategies. You can start in 5 minutes or less. Now, here's your host, Dean Soto. Hey, this is Dean Soto with Freedom in 5 minutescom and we're here again with another Freedom in 5 Minutes episode. Today's topic is this, evolving your bookkeeping with Evolved Finance. That and more coming up. All right, cool. So today's podcast, I'm going to go nuts on this one just because this is something that I have needed for a long time and bookkeeping is not the most sexy, not the most exciting thing, but but when when you have an online business where you're using PayPal, you're paying affiliates and referrers different types of commissions, I have a whole boatload of sales coming in from Stripe and PayPal and all these different places depending on where my customer wants to how they actually want to pay and the big problem that comes up is pretty much every bookkeeper out there that I've ever met has no clue what to do with PayPal, how to reconcile PayPal, how to rec- how, what to do with affiliate income, the uh, revenue that's coming in, going out, and all that other stuff. And oh my gosh, I, I, was, I was so happy to find Parker Stevenson from Evolve Finance because their platform, their, their service, their agency actually solves this very, very specific problem. So Parker, how's it going, man? I appreciate you coming on. Dean, it's my pleasure, man. That might be like one of the best intros we've ever had. I love the enthusiasm <laughs> for some good bookkeeping, man. <laughs> well, it's crazy. It's crazy. You you solve a very specific niche that that literally uh, nobody else business-wise w- w- has this pain unless they are doing a, a couple of things. They're using PayPal. They're, they're selling a service on or something online. And they're trying; they're having to pay pay affiliates, and it is it is crazy that there's nobody else doing what you guys are doing, and and so um, so I that intro is like I literally it's it's just me like happy as a clam because I, you 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 solving my pain, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that that's um, something we talk to our clients a lot about because um, I think especially with an agency business or a service-based business, the more you can hone and focus it in, the better. And I think with a lot of, you know, I'd say financial, just financial professionals, financial businesses, whether it's accounting or bookkeeping, um, the business model has to be so broad, right? Like the bookkeeper you're working with could be working at, on a dentist's office, could be working on a restaurant, and then yeah. could be working on your business. And it's just more knowledge than any one person could have and and have expertise on that. um, I think it's just such a strength that may seem like it limits your market. And I would imagine for a lot of people in our industry, they go, oh, but then I'm not going to have enough clients to work (laughs) with. But the reality is there's plenty of, I mean, the online business space is booming. We don't need to do bookkeeping for any other types of businesses because we're going to have more business than we can handle for a really long time just in this niche alone. So kudos to my business partner, Corey, for <laughs> figuring this out back in 2010. Yeah, that's so cool, man. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great, man. So you, you, so, so I, I want to talk a little bit about you. You actually, uh, hopped on this bag wagon with Corey as you were working with a pretty, pretty, um, well-known company. Can you talk sure. about a little bit about that? Yeah. So before I started working um, with Corey at Evolve Finance, I was working for Adidas Golf here in San Diego. It's like the only part of Adidas, like their big headquarters for the US is in Portland and then the corporate headquarters is in Germany. And so I was actually a musician back in the day, thought I was going to be a rock star (laughs) when I was living in LA and that didn't work out. I went, okay, what's my other thing I really love? And it's like, well, I love golf. I've been a golf addict my whole life. So I'm like, and I'm from San Diego. I'm like, San Diego is essentially what Detroit was for the auto industry. San Diego is for the golf industry. So I was like, (laughs) I'm going to go work for the best golf manufacturer I can find or I can get a job at. And sure enough, I got it at Taylor. It was TaylorMade Adidas Golf at the time and um, had a really great 
five year experience there. Um, like I was saying before we got started was kind of like my, I'd say like my master's degree in business. Like I just learned so, so much from working there and especially the position I was in as a merchandiser and as kind of like a product category mm -hmm. manager. Um, I learned so much about how a business functions from all of the different places with a lot of it being around numbers too. Like there was definitely uh, a lot of financial aspects to what I did that by the time I kind of realized the corporate environment wasn't really my bag and, and some, doing something more entrepreneurial was more up my alley. Um, that by the time Corey and I started having serious discussions around how I could get involved in the business and, and we could start to become partners, um, I felt really prepared to be able to not just jump in and help him grow of all finance, but also be able to provide some insights for the clients we serve that um, maybe other people who have only been in the online space wouldn't be able to provide. Oh, yeah. See, that's cool. That what a what a what a neat experience because you're you're literally getting to play with. Fifty million dollars worth of product and figure out uh, one learn how how to even merchandise and sell and position these things and then and and it's not like you're you're not even it's it's not your money and you yeah, but you're, exactly. you're essentially <laughs> you're essentially just just learning from literally the best and taking that from from there and then going and working with Corey over at Evolved Finance how, how did that transition um happen um where where you know, how did you even like with Corey doing what he was doing like have the aha moment of like I I really want to go and do this instead I know that's a great question dude cuz sometimes I'm like I don't even understand how we got there. <laughs> I don't understand like how we got to this place um but Corey and his wife Anna are actually really good friends with my wife. Like they grew up together. Mm. So um, I've known Corey and Anna for a, a long time now, ever since I met my wife, which was about 12 years ago. And so I knew they had this business, but it was just like, cool, you guys have a business. It seems like it's doing well, good for you guys. But I was very much into my career. Um, but once I kind of got was getting close to that five-year mark at Adidas, I was starting to feel like there wasn't really a next step for me. Like I was... For, for my personality, I'm a generalist. I like mm. to know about a lot of different things, which is why I like the merchandising position. Yeah. But it was so – it was a very stressful, um, crazy job. Like a lot of people that had that role before me didn't stay in it very long. Yeah. Like there was a lot of people that stayed in that position. And so I sort of realized like getting into an entrepreneurial position would allow me to kind of have my business ADD put to work because, you know, obviously I'd have to learn bookkeeping and I started at very humble beginnings with Corey, but the more Corey and I talked, the more we realized, all right, he can teach me the bookkeep, like the, the specific intricacies of, yeah. of the service we provide the client. But, um, I'd be able to bring in a new perspective, like being more of a future thinking business development sort of mind, mm. um, I kind of felt like, Hey, like I, I just don't, I just can't help but think we'd be able to like double, triple, quadruple this business, just putting our strengths together. Yeah. And that was the, the really good thing that I think Corey and I realized is that Corey has very different skills than I have. And so that's, what's made our partnership so strong and mm. what's allowed us to, um, work so well well together. And so just kind of realizing our personalities match well, um, him and his wife kind of telling me like, Hey, these are all the things we have going on. We have all these clients we can't support right now. If you come on and start supporting them and then we'll start to hire a team. It just started. I think we just saw, you know, three, four years down the road, like we could build a real team and yep. really like he's already had so much demand just happening that I'm like, I don't have a, a business idea. I have no idea what kind of business I would <laughs> want to start. And I think what I've realized is I'm really good at taking so even being a creative person, being a musician, yep. but I think I was really good at taking the initial vision they had and being able to add and build upon that because of my experience at Adidas. So it seems crazy. I took a massive pay cut. Um, it, you know, it took a couple of years for us to really hit our stride, but it's been like so worth it. And the business is really thriving, uh, now that we, um, have done a lot of the work to make the business more successful. Oh, that is awesome, man. I, I, yeah, see, I love that. I love that story. The, uh, so with, so once, once like, I, I, I want to 
talk. Okay. So there's two things going, uh, kind of colliding in my head right now. One is I'm <laughs> like, you know, what were some of the, the, the things that you guys had to do to actually start scaling this business? But before that, I kind of, I think, I think I want to give, uh, the audience really, they, they hear why I'm so excited, but I, 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 I kind of want you to give the, the description of the, of what you guys the big problem that you guys solve, um, because I know my problems, um, and I'm sure you, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have kind of a better way of putting out that, that, that message, but, um, yeah. So like what makes you guys so different from every other bookkeeper that's out there? Well, that's what got me interested in the business to begin with is, is exactly what I'm about to explain. We were talking a little bit about it before I, I never thought I'd get involved in a bookkeeping business, man. Like I, that just wasn't my MO. Like I, I've told our clients, I don't try to talk a whole lot about it, but I, I told our clients, like I, I'm not a fine, I didn't get, get a degree in finance. And the reality is bookkeeping isn't rocket science. Yeah, It's not, but just for me, be having been a musician, like a guy that was going after my passions, I wanted to work in the golf industry, I wanted to work in the music industry. Like I wanted to do the stuff that I thought was cool. Bookkeeping did not seem cool. <laughs> But as I got older and more mature, I realized um, that that stuff, you know, following your passion becomes a grind no matter what it is. Yeah. And so what matters is working with people you like, feeling fulfilled from the work. I know for me, feeling of service to other people, um, feeling like I can make an impact wherever I'm at, like that becomes really important. And so when Corey was kind of telling me about what they were doing at Evolve Fit, uh, Finance, even though I wasn't like a bookkeeping expert at that point, I was like, is there anyone else doing what you're doing? And he's like, not really. Like yeah. we were talking about, like our niche is so specific that we are solving a problem that we've seen repeatedly now over the years because we've talked with, I mean, I've been on so many calls since I started at the business, hundreds of entrepreneurs. And that has taught us so much about what the struggles our clients have had before they start working with us. So over the years, we've just honed down our service more and more. Like when Corey got started, we kind of did all of the bookkeeping things. Mm -hmm. And now we're only focusing on the bookkeeping things that we can be really, really good at and make the most impact on. And we've built all our systems and processes around that. But this is kind of like if any, if the listeners can kind of take away something from this is that from working with such a specific niche. Again, I hear the same problems over and over again, and we understand what our clients are going through. Number one, because we run an online business mm -hmm. as, as well. So that helps. But secondly, because we have built a service that does fit in niche so specifically and solve such a specific problem, it's easier to relate to your clients and mm -hmm. it's easier to wow them yep. and to, um, reduce the stress and, and create excitement around solving that mm -hmm. problem for them, especially because they haven't been able to find a solution anywhere else. So that alone is such a competitive advantage over the experience our clients have had working with other bookkeepers yeah. because it's just, it's, it's nothing sexy. It's just understanding their problem, mm -hmm. having a service that addresses that problem, like dead on. We don't, you know, I think sometimes some small businesses kind of skirt around with their messaging or don't get focused enough on what they're really trying to accomplish yeah. with their service or with their product. And that's just one thing that we're very lucky to have figured out a long time ago is this like taking care of the books for an online business properly and then helping our clients to understand what those numbers mean. It's simple when I say it like that, but the reality is if you've worked with an accountant, worked with a bookkeeper, worked with any financial professional, a lot of them just don't get that. They yeah. don't understand that customer service is important. They don't understand that the relationship with their client is super important. And I'm not trying to like crap on anyone who has an accounting business or bookkeeping business. Like I'm sure there's other ones out there that have good customer service experiences, but our clients when they come to us, they haven't. Yeah. And so all those pieces of just no one else serving this niche, us being able to really hone in our service because we know this niche so well, mm -hmm. like that was the opportunity. And it's not, a, it's not like we have a new app, like this crazy new app or like it's something super revolutionary. It's just innovating what's been a very old um, sort of unchanged service and catching it up to modern times essentially. And that for me was the reason why I was excited to jump in because it's like, we essentially have no competition 
and we have a super specific target market, like it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, no, for sure. I love, I love it. I, I, cause I, I still remember the first time I had, so I went from, uh, from it was, what was it called? Outright. And then it turned into GoDaddy bookkeeping. And then that was like when that was, that was like when I was just starting out in my business and it was, I didn't need QuickBooks as soon as I went to QuickBooks. Cause I had to, I, yep. I went, um, I became a sub chapter S, uh, LLC and, and I was doing a lot more complicated stuff, uh, uh, that, that online entrepreneurs face. I was like, holy crap. I literally can, I don't even understand how to reconcile at the end of the month, this doesn't make sense yeah. to me and everything like that. I've hired a, a bookkeeper to just explain to me how to do all of this uh, st- uh, stuff for my, for my thing. And she, she was literally like, Oh my gosh, like uh, you're all messed up. Like this is, I'm not used to this. Like, and I'm like, that doesn't help. Like it doesn't help me at all. And so, so like, and that hap- almost happened pretty much over and over with people going, just not understanding uh, a lot of the stuff like the affiliate commissions and, and, and PayPal reconciling and things like that. Um, and so even just in your messaging, it's like, bam, like that's, that's my problem. Like, and, and it's cool how you guys have done that. And, uh, and even though it might be a little scary to do that, you're really speaking to, a lot of people just with that messaging and niching down like that. Yeah. And that's a key to, I think any really successful online business. I mean, there's more competition online than there's ever been. So the more you can find your specific people, like even if it seems like a really small audience, speak to them directly and clearly have the confidence to have your messaging speak directly there because it's taken us a long, a long time to really build our copy on our website and our messaging, um, through our content and all that to just be so focused and direct to talk just to the people that need to hear it. Right. Like not the people that are like, and maybe take it or leave it. We're talking to people like you Dean that are like, I've struggled with this. I'm not getting the support we need. And and I think that's the one thing, um, I wanted to explain because like your, your situation, like for you to be doing your books in the early stage of your business, fine. Like Mm -hmm. it's an extra expense that if you're just getting started and just trying to make some money, manage it in a spreadsheet. Like, but we never recommend any like entrepreneur try to learn how to use bookkeeping software. Like you got, go make money. Like make, you need to be spending (laughs) all of your time and energy around finding clients, building your leads, like figuring out how to drive revenue that, um, keep your finances simple in the early stages. And once money starts coming in, um, that's when you hire someone else to do the books because that's that's a skill set that for you as a business owner to take the time to learn how to do properly, which again, even to find the resources to teach you the way we would want to do it mm-hmm. for an online business, it's just the chances are slim you're going to get the right tutorials anyways. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a skill set that took, I mean, it took me a year to get really good at really doing the books for our clients. And that was after the support of, you know, Corey and and an employee, Susan, that we've had there, um, who's Mm -hmm. been with the business for a really long time. And now I live and breathe this stuff. I can do it in my sleep, but no one running a business that's not a bookkeeping business should know how to do this (laughs) stuff in their sleep. They should be outsourcing that to someone like us who actually knows how to do it right. And the thing is, with bookkeeping, there's so much room for interpretation. Like that's kind of the frustrating part is that um, every bookkeeper is going to do it differently. They're going to set up your chart of accounts differently and your profit and loss statements differently. Sure. Um, some of them are going to do cheats to kind of like sneak around having to do a lot of manual labor to do it wrong. Yeah. You know, like, so that aspect of this industry too is difficult because it, it's hard to find someone that's going to, again, have the understanding of your business well enough to know what needs to be done right. And where can you be a little more efficient. And again, mm-hmm. I think I, it obviously works for our business, but anyone else who's listening, especially if you have an agency, a service or anything like that, like just don't be afraid to hone that service down to a specific problem. Like you don't have to solve all of the problems for every business, just have one target market, get in that niche and solve that problem really well. And, you know, we've had nothing but referrals. Like we just started marketing, um, in the last six months, really, like really mm-hmm. starting to push there. And, uh, and, we could still like, we don't need it. We just want to grow faster, mm-hmm. but 
when you do such a good job and you are so good at solving that one problem, people are going to talk about it. People are going to want to share it. And especially in the early stages of a new business, it's a damn great way to make sure you start getting, you know, more clients down the road. Uh, yeah, that is cool, man. I love it. I, I love the, uh, I love the fact that you went from being a musician to working at Adidas and wanting to be wanting, wanting to be <laughs> like this, you know, rub shoulders with these really, you know, awesome celebrities and everything like that. And even through just from niching down and doing what you're doing with the bookkeeping, you actually have seriously like one of my, my don't, don't tell my wife, one of my crushes from, from, uh, uh, the 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 nineties with uh, the Matrix you have, as one of your customers, Carrie <laughs> Carrie Ann Moss, and I'm like, as soon as I saw her, saw her there, I'm like, oh my god, this is crazy! What? And so that's pretty. That's a cool little story, yeah. Well, and that's the thing is like, I think ev- the world is changing so much with technology and what the internet's allowing people to do and entertain. I mean, think about entertainment changing. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's obviously been extremely successful, but think about. Um, goop yeah. you know and what um what's her name who has a goop i'm terrible at names but mm. um uh gwyneth paltrow mm. uh you know she makes a great living as an actress and as a celebrity and she starts this e lifestyle website that's blown up like i think um even people who are already in the spotlight are looking for ways to connect with their audiences more looking for ways to share maybe knowledge like in Carrie Ann's situation. She's like this super highly trained meditation uh, professional. She's a badass yoga Mm. uh, instructor. Like she, she has this whole other aspect of her life that she's um, sort of kept out of the limelight that now she's like starting to bring a business around, right? Like and bringing and bringing interest in Um, and, and all of our, and what's interesting is like in this industry, a lot of our clients are like little celebrities within their own right. Right. Like they all, they all have their audiences that follow them and are looking to them for advice and guidance and buy their products. And that's like, I kind of look at the way our clients run their businesses now, kind of like back in the days of MySpace when I was in the band, where it's like, (laughs) everyone's trying to like get as many people to like their MySpace page and, 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 you know, click click on the page and listen to the songs and see the, the song count. And in a lot of ways, that's kind of what everyone's doing with these small businesses. Cause like Adidas has the power of brand awareness, mm-hmm. right? Like everyone knows the three stripes and knows what an Adidas logo looks like yep. or knows what a Coke logo is, right? They don't, they don't have to worry. Those kinds of huge brands don't have to worry about awareness, but when you're running a small business, you might only have someone's attention for yeah. a short period of time. And so during that short period, you need to make sure you're making an impact with whatever content you have, whatever your website's saying. And inevitably a lot of, especially these, these business owners we have that have more personality type branded businesses. Um, if they do a good job of that, they kind of build fans, they build followers, people yeah. that start to trust them and want to um, follow them either for entertainment pers- purposes or educational purposes. So um, it's definitely been super interesting to see like these people we get to we get to work with and all that. And it's definitely um, a huge uh, it's one of the things that's super interesting about what we do and takes what's like a, a normally boring subject in bookkeeping and makes it like so intriguing and engaging because we're really just looking at like the core aspects of all these people's businesses and yep. making sure they're running properly. Yes. So um, it's, I'm glad you appreciate it because I think in some ways we get used to it, but um, <laughs> I think um, it's definitely not the way I thought I'd be making an impact on, you know, people's lives and people's businesses, let alone these really amazing entrepreneurs that, totally. you know, in their own rights have amazing stories, amazing experiences. Like I love talking with our clients because they're truly um, fascinating and accomplished people. Yeah. I love that, man. It's, that, that is, yeah, it's, it's just cool. It's, it's, it's just neat how, how, um, because of solving that, that one problem, every, anyone who is going to be the go from, from, you know, being a celebrity or, or it, from anywhere, as soon as they get into the online space where they're having these, you know, they're taking things from PayPal, they're, they're doing these very specific things, Boom! You, now, like you solve that problem, and now you're literally being able to talk to people that are in, in, in and and help them to grow new new things. These and these are people who are almost unreachable in other ways. And it's just cool how how through having that very specific niche, you've been able to do that. Um, yeah, really amazing. The uh, 
So I always ask this five minute mindset shifts question, this five minute strategy, uh, that's if someone were to take it and use it, uh, it would change the game for them because it's changed the game for you. Um, so what's you, you mentioned that, uh, that, you like to have like a feedback, like a feedback dashboard type thing. Um, can you explain that in regards to um, how it's helped you to massively change the way uh, your business and other people's businesses? Uh, yeah, so that's like the reality of everyone's business here. Like if you're listening and you have an online business or a small business, the reality is like even if you have the most heart-centered business and you're not even it's not about the money it's about helping people or what whatever your mindset around your business is you your business is still a cash machine it's the it's this machine that's sucking money in and spitting money out yep. hopefully keeping some for you that's the reality of your business like that's what truly is going to make it successful or not successful no matter how happy your clients are no matter however good you are at whatever it is you do how ma- how much volume you sell of your products if the money side of things doesn't work then you're not playing the game right you don't have your business model set up and you're not up properly and you're not focusing on the right things mm-hmm. So the example um, I, I use a lot is that everyone needs to know, they need to get feedback on the decisions they're making in their business. Mm. And that feedback comes in the form of your financial data. Mm. And unfortunately, unless you have someone organizing that financial data for you, um, a lot of people just ignore it. They mm. don't look at their financial data. And especially even if they're a new or younger business and they could be doing it in a spreadsheet themselves, they just, I don't think people see enough value in that. Mm-hmm. And so what I like to kind of, use as an analogy is, you know, if you were driving a car without a dashboard, like you just had no idea about the speedometer, you have check engine light, your oil gauge, all of that stuff is just not there. You can't see it. Mm -hmm. You can still drive the car without it, but you're guessing when you need to fill up on gas, you're guessing when you need to kind Mm -hmm. of, you know, do your oil change. You're guessing if like there's an engine, you have to, you no longer have this direct input to see if your car's running properly, yeah. you know, and you know, the check engine light could be on and blinking yeah, and it's just, you have it covered up and you can't see, you have no idea. There's this catastrophic problem that could be coming your way and until your car just breaks down. And yeah. that car is symbolic of, of a lot of our clients' businesses in, in our own business. Um, if you don't have this financial tracking and, and some sort of feedback happening every month to see, hey, am I spending my money on the right things? Am I doing enough to drive revenue to cover the expenses I have? Is my business profitable enough? Am I saving enough for taxes? There's all these aspects of running a business that I think you, a lot of entrepreneurs don't realize they need to pay more attention to yeah. until the pain becomes so bad yep. that they have no choice but to figure it out, um, which is a lot of times when, when we find them, or <laughs> they just ignore it until they get a huge tax bill or literally their business breaks down and then it's no longer profitable and they can't, and they have to shut the business down. Yeah. And so that's the power we've seen with our clients with what we do is that as soon as they start getting these hard numbers in front of them and they're like, Oh, like I didn't realize I could understand this. I didn't realize how important this was. I didn't realize how important this feedback was for me to get. Mm. They instantly change the way they think about their business because in some ways it does become a game. How do I make sure these numbers stay healthy and I make these numbers the way I want through the daily activity of myself and my team in the business? And that's something Corey and I have seen tremendously in our own business. We have our own um, you know, financial tracking we do for ourselves that allows us to plan for the future, that allows us to make sure that what we're doing on a monthly basis is supporting our team, supporting our clients, we're hitting our financial goals. I um, mean, all of that is just getting comfortable with your financial data, getting that feedback on a monthly basis. So you can just actually know, is this business running well or is it not? And you can't, you can only go off of a gut feeling for so long. So that's what I would challenge everyone here to do, whether it's going out and hiring a bookkeeper or just taking, managing your finances yourself, like in your spreadsheet or whatever it is yourself, taking that really seriously and using that financial data to start shaping the future of your business. See, that's cool. Uh, and I, 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 I can totally, I so saw, I, I've had situations where, where if I didn't know the numbers, I would have been in a world of hurt. And, yeah, for sure. And, and and even even like little things too, because if like you know, I could imagine since I mean, uh, depending on 
depending on uh, the the tiers and stuff uh, that you guys offer, I know some of them you actually talk with your clients on a on a regular basis. Um, mm-hmm. Once you get a report, sometimes it could be something like, you know, just me seeing why am I spending so much on uh, this type of software, this or or on software in general, and do I have like things that are just that I'm not even using or uh, why, why, um, you know, it, uh, I don't have anything like you said for taxes, for payroll taxes, for, for, um, estimated taxes, uh, things like that. Uh, if I don't have, uh, uh, if I don't have awareness of how much am I going to actually have to pay? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that, that have happened just from seeing the numbers. I mean, just recently I cut, cut a lot of software that I was like, for whatever reason, I was like, oh, I'm going to use that someday. I'm going to use it someday. And it was like $400 or $500 worth of software that just sitting there and doing and not doing anything for my business at all. And so I'm like, oh, cancel, 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 cancel. Um, but but not And those audits that. are important. That's important to yep. keeping the business as profitable as possible, right? Yeah. And I would imagine too, uh, has there ever been any situation where, where a – client was say even giving too much um like affiliate income or something like that to where it was actually hurting their business or or something like where it was actually hurting their business because they didn't realize too much is going out and you're not even keeping any for yourself have you ever had any Uh, situation i mean we've seen it all man it's crazy dean um we're just recently this year we have this client a, a newer client who um I just absolutely adore he's such an amazing amazing person but he had a whole revenue stream that we were looking at going, you need to cut this revenue stream out. It's taking up all of your time. Mm. It's called stress and making your business less profitable. And we're not really making any money off of it. Mm. Um, so why, why do we have this? These two other offers you have are the ones that are easier to manage, provide more value, and we can grow they still have tremendous potential for growth. So we get in a situation like that, especially on the revenue side, or sometimes clients are trying to sell too many mm-hmm. offers. They have too many offers and a small business just can't afford. They don't, there's not enough time or enough marketing dollars to try to talk about and promote a ton of different things on yeah. a regular basis. Um, we've seen clients realize, oh, like, because there's, there's all these balances, right? Like you're trying to find the balance of keeping the business healthy while also making sure you're getting paid as an owner and making yeah. the money you need to make to support your family and your lifestyle. And then also, uh, and and there's a lot of intricacies between the balance of those two things, like building up savings within your business so mm-hmm. that if you have a down month, we have cash to get us through that and it's not a stressful situation. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes where someone is taking out too much money from the business, they don't realize how much they're taking out because they're looking at their business as still their own personal bank account mm. and then realize that even though the business is, is would be successful in the eyes of almost anyone probably um, listening right now, you'd be like, oh, I'd love to have a business like this, but they're still in financial turmoil because they're just not aware of how much they're paying themselves, how much they're spending on different things. Yeah. So the bottom line might look good on the PL, but the reality is they're still kind of cash poor. There's just not enough cash in the business that if they wanted to hire another person, if yeah. they wanted to start running Facebook ads, they have no flexibility to adapt or jump on opportunities in the future. So there's just it's such a a delicate balance between being able to invest in the business's future, be able to protect the, the business in the long run, um, while also keeping the business super profitable so you as a business owner can build your own wealth. And the only way you can figure out what that balance feels, how that balance works best for you and, and for your situation is to have that monthly scorecard, to have that monthly feedback yeah. so you can make those decisions to give your business the best chance of sticking around for a really long time and to give you the best chance as a business owner to have a business that will actually create personal wealth for you as well. Yeah, dude. Like I've never been so excited about bookkeeping. (laughs) (laughs) It's crazy, man. It's, it's awesome. Like it's, 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 it's cool. Like it, uh, you know, my wife's really good with numbers and she, that's all like for me, I'm like ideal. It, it frees me to be like idealist. I can, I can just go do my thing come back, see what the numbers are. Okay. Things are good. Okay. Go, go do, go do my thing. Come back. Oh, sure. things are not so, so good. Uh, let me fix this. Uh, and to just like you said, be fully out there and 
doing what I do best rather than, you know, uh, crap, now I have to spend six hours at the end of this month doing my bookkeeping and I don't even know if I'm doing it right. And I don't even, you know, like it, it, it it's a, it's a very painful process in a one that I avoid if I have to do it myself, you know? Um, and which then gives me no feedback, you know? And yeah. It, and we don't expect any of our clients to be financial pros. We're not asking them to be CFOs. All we're asking them to do is to, like you just said, take a look at the numbers, see where you're at, realize where you need to make some adjustments, realize where you see your opportunities, or even just go pat yourself on the back. Things are going well. <laughs> Everything's going as planned. Great. And then you go back in the business. We're talking about 30 minutes to an hour and a half a month. Yep. of looking at your numbers and taking that part of your business seriously. We're not running multinational corporations here. Mm. No one needs CFOs. We don't need controllers or like full-time financial reporting. Mm. We just need this part of our business is organized cleanly, like um, Marie Kondo, this stuff right here, you know, yeah. Marie Kondo your business <laughs> and get the financial stuff organized. And so that way you have a clean, well-organized machine that is giving you the feedback you need to see, am I doing a good job as a business owner or not? And again, just those reports on their own, most people wouldn't be able to re just read a report and know. And that's where the second part of our service comes in, which is the education part around understanding what those numbers are. And right. again, it's not rocket science here, but at the end of the day, if you've never worked in a financial situation, you know, so many of our clients never even worked in a big company before, yeah, right? Like yeah. they've only been entrepreneurs or um, they were more creatives or doing something else that wasn't really business oriented. And now all of a sudden they're in these businesses and they're like, what? Like they don't know what they don't know. Totally, totally. But they're still fully capable of learning this stuff because if you can add and subtract, man, you're going to be just fine as a business owner. We just need <laughs> to clean this stuff up and get the right information in front of you. I love it. I love it. So how can people reach you? How can people, uh, uh, if they if they want to schedule time with you or uh, just be to, to work with you, how can people actually get in contact with you and Corey? Yeah, so the best way is just go to our website, evolvefinance.com. Uh, there's schedule call buttons all over the website to have you set up a time, but I recommend taking a look at the website because uh, we definitely um, make it very clear what type of businesses we work with and sort of where you need to be at to be a good fit for us. Um, but I think I'd sent you a link for a really great yep. download as well. So we have a sales forecasting tool that um, I think is a much longer link than probably makes sense to say over this <laughs> podcast. So, so look in the podcast details, I imagine, or yep. on the... Um, um, on the blog page uh, for this podcast upload, but it's it's the free sales forecast tool that if you're like new to the number side of things and you want to see the power of taking some time to think about the financial side of your business and, and the power of using your numbers to shape what the future of your business can look like and make sure that you're building a business that's going to be profitable and healthy, then the sales forecasting tool is just a spreadsheet that we've done all the work for. You just plug some numbers in and uh, it also comes with a free tutor a tutorial, video tutorial that'll walk you through exactly how to use it. I honestly think it's like one of the best free things any business <laughs> educator gives away because um, I just, I would never start a business or get involved in a business if I didn't have a budget and a forecast in place yep. to see what's the potential of this business. And this tool will get you, um, get you on your way to feeling like your numbers aren't so scary. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So yeah, we'll put those in the, we'll put that in the show notes. Uh, it, but definitely go head over to evolvedfinance.com, evolvedfinance.com, E V O L V E D finance.com. Just in case, just in case you didn't know how to spell that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or if I'm slurring or whatever, uh, but uh, go check it out. I mean, they're they're really awesome. If you're if you're doing anything online and you're you have affiliates or PayPal or anything like that, you um, you know the, the, the it, you have to definitely check them out because. It is painful, especially as as you start being getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and you're getting a lot more things that you're managing and a lot more different revenue streams. It becomes harder and harder and harder. So, um, so all that being said, thanks so much for being on, man. I appreciate you, Dean. I appreciate you having me. It was really fun talking with you. Oh, yeah, it's uh, is is uh, is awesome. Like I said, this is uh, n didn't expect to be so excited about bookkeeping, man. So thanks, Parker. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So. 
All right, cool. So that is the end of this podcast episode. But of course, it's not the end of the podcast. If you want to get a virtual systems architect, go head over to freedominfiveminutes.com. What they can do for you is you show them a video five minutes a day. They'll document it. They'll do it for you. And you never have to do that thing ever again. So go check out freedominfiveminutes.com. Go check out evolvedfinance.com as well. And until next time, I will see you on the next Freedom in 5 Minutes podcast episode. Thanks for listening to the Freedom in 5 Minutes podcast. Now, head over to www.freedomin5minutes.com and register for our free masterclass and discover how to start systemizing and automating your entire business five minutes at a time. We'll see you next time on the Freedom in 5 Minutes podcast.